Have you ever been in a situation where your camera doesn't have enough dynamic range for the shot you're taking, so part of your image gets blown out? Simple fix. You just go into Resolve and increase the dynamic range slider, giving you all the stops you need. And it's just that easy. Or is it just that easy? Hey folks, Nathan here. And while the title and thumbnail of this video is not clickbait, Increasing the dynamic range of your camera is not as simple as just moving a slider. When working in post, you can only alter what the sensor captures, more or less. And every sensor has a limited range of light that it can capture. We measure this range by doublings of light called stops. Even your eyes have limited range. Like when it's a bright sunny day and you enter a dark room and can't see anything, your pupils widen so more light hits your retina allowing you to see. Well. You can do the same thing with a camera, opening and closing the aperture to allow more or less light to hit the sensor. But the range of the sensor remains the same, with aperture adjustments being one of the three primary in-camera exposure controls alongside shutter speed and ISO. So then what if you could record multiple exposures at the same time? Well that's exactly what RED does with their HDRX feature, altering exposures with shutter speed. Recording double the frames alternating between shutter speeds effectively adding up to six stops of dynamic range when you combine the frames. But this isn't anything new. Photographers figured this out a long time ago using a method called bracketed photography, capturing the same photo at multiple exposures. So what can you do if you're shooting video and you don't have a red? Well, as long as the camera doesn't move, there's a simple compositing workaround. To make this trick work, you need your camera on a tripod and expose the shot so nothing's getting blown out in the image. Then you adjust the exposure of the camera for the darker parts of the shot, making sure nothing moves in the frame. In this example, I adjusted the ISO and used a variable ND filter to change my exposure. Then we bring both our shots into Resolve, placing our darker shot on the bottom of the timeline and our brighter shot on top of that. And after getting everything trimmed up, we're good to go into the color page. As this was shot using Blackmagic RAW, we can make some adjustments to the image. So let's decrease our ISO a little bit, a little bit darker. And just for kicks, we can check out highlight recovery to see that it's doing a great job getting back way more detail than I ever expected we'd be able to get back. But that's not why we're here. We're going to right click and add an alpha output. We're then going to drag our alpha to our alpha output. So now we can draw a power window. Now the way I set up this shot was so that we have this beam right in the middle here that creates a clear divide between the light and the dark. As you can see, now this is looking rather cheesy, but if we increase the softness of this area, it makes it a little more gradual. It looks cheesy, but workable. Now, while the frame is identical, the exposure levels are wildly different, which is exactly what we were after. However, the main problem here is that our black levels are quite a bit different. As you can see on the darker exposed image, this wood, for example, is much darker than the wood on the left side. So what we need to do is get these kind of in the same ballpark. So we're gonna create a note before this note with shift S. So now we're gonna make some primary adjustments. We want our lift down a little bit to get that closer, maybe our gamma, our offset, and maybe just a scooch of gain to get them kind of in the same world. So while that's looking better, we need finer controls. We're gonna go into our log controls, and we're again going to bring our shadow down a little bit just to get that again more in the same world. And as we make these exposure adjustments, we're noticing a bit of a problem. There's a bit of a color cast difference between the two images, and that's because we were using a variable ND, and not just any variable ND, a very cheap variable ND, which introduces more or less green depending on how much ND you choose to use. But we can easily offset this in our camera controls, bring in a little more magenta, and maybe we can fine tune our window a little bit more just to increase that soft edge a scooch. Move it over to the left slightly. And now this is definitely looking much closer. Now we can also make adjustments to the darker layer by pressing the up arrow on our keyboard. And we can make this match even more going into our camera raw tab. Maybe we want to decrease our ISO a little bit more, change the color science, and possibly get rid of a little bit of green tint. And just making slight exposure adjustments as you see fit. I think our shadow needs to go down a little bit and our gamma needs to go up just a little bit. And now that's definitely looking like it's in the same world. Now we can go into our edit page. If we want to grade the two together, we can create a compound clip. But what I want to do for grading them together is we're going to use an adjustment clip on top. And now we can go in and add any type of look to the entire image 
that we may want. So we can come into the edit page and if we disable our look here, we can see our before and our after. So this is what our dark shot looks like. Now you may be wondering to yourself, well, why don't I just take a light and point it at our actor in this area so it gets much closer to this kind of exposure. And to that, I say that's a great idea. If you can solve the problem on set, that's almost always better than having to fix it in post. However, if for some reason you are in dire need of more dynamic range out of your camera, then a technique like this, provided you don't move the camera, could do the trick in a pinch.